from the free spirited dolphin. Oh, we love to hold on to stress, but where we are going, you can leave it behind. Are you ready? You just let go! What happens on the beach stays on the beach, you guessed it! Grab hold of your spirit of adventure <laughs> and let the waters of Florida's west coast put on a show. I'm Taylor with Suncoast Water Sports. Welcome to St. Pete Beach. We begin our three video series of St. Pete and Clearwater. In the next video, we'll take you to downtown St. Pete, the Skyway Bridge, Fort DeSoto, and Shell Key. And after that, Clearwater Beach. In this video, we show St. Pete Beach, which consistently ranks among TripAdvisor's top beaches in the U.S. And it's easy to see why. From the laid back, non-commercialized Paso Grill Beach on the south end, to the lively resorts in the middle part of the beach. There is something for everyone here. We'll take you on a variety of boat tours where you can explore the nature preserves, islands, and waters around St. Pete Beach, like the Dolphin Racer, the Starlight Sapphire Dinner or Sightseeing Cruise, and the Summer Water Sports Speedboat Adventures where you can drive the boat. For the adrenaline junkie, we'll hop on a banana boat and go parasailing with Suncoast Water Sports. Whole view of the beach, it's a beautiful day out here. A water slide and zip lining at the trade winds. We'll show a variety of lodging from a condo on the northern part of the beach at Upham Beach and seven different resorts in the middle of St. Pete Beach with tropical beach bars and dining. From the postcard inn to the trade winds, to the newly remodeled Bellwether Resort and the iconic Don Cesar. We'll show coffee shops and more dining. After all, America runs on Dunkin'. Yep, St. Pete Beach style, all right? And we'll give news of some new things coming to St. Pete Beach soon, including a boardwalk. And we'll give you tips to help you plan your St. Pete Beach getaway. So, I saved a chair for you. Or would you rather sit here? If so, hold on for dear life. Abundant ship! Either way, I think by the end of the video, you'll be saying... We love St. Pete Beach! Welcome to St. Pete Beach! It's sunrise over Boca Ciega Bay, which borders St. Pete Beach to the east, the beginning of another gorgeous day in St. Pete, nicknamed Sunshine City. In 1967, there were two years and one month of consecutive days of sunshine, which is a Guinness World Record. On the northern side is Blind Pass, with Treasure Island on the right and St. Pete Beach on the left. A look back at Treasure Island, which we showed in our Madeira Beach video a couple of years ago. At the bridge here is Blind Pass Boat and Jet Ski Rentals, which offers a two-hour sea dew tour for $200, or you can rent these deck boats. At the inlet, where Blind Pass comes out to the Gulf, is where the St. Pete Beach coastline begins, which stretches for four miles from Upham Beach here, all the way down to Paso Grill Beach on the south end. It is here you'll find Calm Ocean Shores, a two-bedroom, two-bath condo that has breathtaking views of the Gulf with a fully stocked and equipped kitchen. The condos are on the third and fifth floor, 501 and 301, and are on the far south end of the building, therefore giving you a breathtaking view where you can see the curvature of the shoreline all the way down to the Don Cesar. This is the view from the fifth floor unit. There's a nice beachside pool, shuffleboard, cornhole, and private beach on property. There is also a barbecue deck with loungers overlooking the Gulf. I would have stayed here, but it was all booked up. So I recommend booking early. Next to it at the public beach, you can rent two beach chairs and an umbrella for $40 for all day. And there's one of these self-service paddleboard rentals where you can rent a paddleboard for $25 per hour. 
This is one of the favorite beaches of St. Pete Beach. One of the few public beaches you can park right next to if you are not staying at a condo or resort here. Another thing that makes this location great is you are just a scenic half mile walk down the beach to the postcard inn where all the beach bars are at with live music and food. So you can party it up at night but still have a nice quiet place to come back to. We'll show you those resorts later in the video but want to show you a couple of boat tours in Pasagro Beach first. A half mile northeast of the condo is the Cory Avenue Shopping District with specialty food, arts, crafts, clothing, and gift shops. Also on Sundays, a market from 10 to 2. There's La Crescette, a breakfast restaurant with outdoor seating, good reviews. There's a popular Cocoa Addiction, a coffee bakery and chocolate shop, but it didn't open till 9 a.m. So I went across the street to Grove Coffee and Surf, just four tenths of a mile from the condo. And glad I did. Had a toasted coconut latte with a breakfast croissant. Ran into a subscriber who is also a YouTuber, David, and his dog Maui, and his wife Erica. We were watching your videos and we chose to move here. His YouTube channel, The Next Block, is a podcast about crypto blockchain. And next to us was a nice family with their son Rowan, whom I would end up ziplining with later in the video. We now travel over the Cory Causeway to Pasadena, where Starlight Cruises is located at, with a couple of boat tours. They have the Starlight Sapphire, a two-hour dining cruise. It's $25 for adults, $15 for children 3 to 12. Their evening cruises are $5 more. Once on board, you order and pay for your dining service from a menu, which you can see on their website. They sail down Boca Ciega Bay, all the way to Pasagro Beach. We, however, are going on Starlight Cruises Speedboat, the Dolphin Racer, where I had the privilege to meet Dennis and his family, visiting from Ohio. Yeah, we rode this last year, with a, and we enjoyed it so much, that's why we're bringing our grandchildren down to enjoy the same thing that we enjoyed. Dennis, a Vietnam veteran, who also helped to run Honor Flight, the program that flies veterans to the Washington, D.C. War Memorials. Also want to mention that close to here is Coastal Cruises, that we will show in the St. Petersburg video, which sails out to the Skyway Bridge at night. The Dolphin Racer is $26.50 for adults, $16.50 for children 3 to 12. It's a 90 minute to 2 hour cruise down Boca Ciega Bay. A uh, big pig building over there. It's actually the Fountain Star Hotel, or also known as the uh, Pig Palace. It then goes around Tierra Verde. The best place to sit is in the back of the boat to see the dolphins, as they like to play in the wake from the boat. The boat then goes into Tampa Bay in the Skyway area by Tarpon Key, a wildlife preserve. We will show more of the Skyway wreck area in our St. Petersburg video. You are guaranteed to see dolphins or your next trip is free. The boat then sails through the Fort DeSoto and Shell Key area and then out into the Gulf if the weather is good. And it's not only dolphins that tag along for the cruise, but also birds. It is narrated by Captain Zach and Bailey, his assistant, who give lots of good info about the region. Oh, and speaking of Bailey, only service dogs are allowed on this cruise. There's Hubbard's Ferry, which operates from the Fort DeSoto Bay Pier. It sails out to Egmont Key, an island midway between Paso Grill and Anna Maria Island. It is $45 for adults, $25 for children, 11 and under. And there's dolphin landings with sailing excursions, as well as fishing charters. They are across the street from the Dolphin Beach Resort. A look at Tropicana Field and the skyline of St. Pete that we'll see next week. Now on the south part of St. Pete Beach, along the Pinellas Bayway, is the Isla del Sol Yacht Club. We go over the bridge that we just went under on the boat tour. The Pinellas Bayway connects I-275 with St. Pete Beach, ending at the Don Cesar Resort. In the distance, the Tierra Verde Bridge that we also sailed under on the boat. On the south side of the Pinellas Bayway is Vina del Mar Island, which sits adjacent to Paso Grill Beach. As well as lavish homes, there are vacation rentals you can find on Verbo. Vina del Mar is only accessible by a little bridge from Paso Grill. 
on Golf Boulevard heading south to Pasagro. The public beach begins at 21st Street. Here you have a mile of public beach with convenient parking along the whole length of the beach. Parking is $3.25 an hour. On weekdays, you should have no problem finding a parking spot, but on weekends during spring and fall, it can fill up. So, I'd recommend arriving by noon. Pasagro is where you can experience Old Florida. It is unique from the rest of St. Pete Beach. It's a quiet beach with lots of sea oak dunes. You won't find any high rises here. All the businesses locally own. Buildings are limited to three floors and no buildings on the beach with the exception of Paradise Grill, which serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner, as well as cocktails, beer, and wine. Picnic tables and add ironic chairs surround the patio overlooking the golf. You tend to find a little more wildlife here than further up St. Pete Beach. There's another self-service paddleboard rental here. This is a great place to experience the sunset. There's a long-standing tradition of ringing a ship's bell at sunset. Jim LeBlanc, also known as Ding Dong, picks someone to ring the bell. Afterwards, they write their name and where they are from in a logbook and that book is kept in the Gulf Beaches Historical Museum that is across the street. Across the street from Paradise Grill is the Historical District, a quaint little downtown. There's the Brass Monkey, a seafood restaurant with elevated seating overlooking the beach. Owners are from the Maryland Chesapeake Bay area. Next to it, the Keystone Motel with good reviews, although not pet friendly. And in the center of town, the Hurricane Seafood Restaurant in a Victorian style building with three levels of dining, including a rooftop bar and dining area. Directly across the street from the Paradise Grill between 9th and 10th Avenue is a nice park area with gorgeous trees. There's multiple shuffleboard courts. Pass the Grill really became a vacation getaway in 1901 when the first hotel was built. And the buildings today, although remodeled, still retain that vintage beach architecture of that era. Just across from the Pass the Grill North Channel is Shell Key. And just beyond that is Fort DeSoto. And way out there, in the top right, is Egmont Key. Point Passagrill is the very south end of St. Pete Beach. On Southwest Beach is a walkable jetty. Here you find the Islands Inn Resort, a pet friendly motel. And next to it is the Passagrill Dog Beach. Well, I find most of St. Pete Beach and especially Passagrill to be dog friendly. Dogs are not allowed on most of the beaches in Pinellas County. So good to have a dog beach here. Bailey having a meet and greet with Juno the Snoodle, Barkley and Brewster, Tibetan Terriers, and Bill the Havanese. We head back north up the island, now on the bay side. There's street parking and a sidewalk that extends for a half a mile all the way to 12th Avenue. These four bedroom, four bath, colorful houses go for 3.4 million. A quarter of a mile north of Dog Beach is Mary Pier with a fish market. For fishing, you'll find flounder, snapper, snook, and mackerel. There's a boat shuttle to Shell Key from here for $25. Departs three times a day. Includes a parking pass. A half mile north of Mary Pier is the Paso Grill Marina. It is here you'll find endless summer water sports, speedboat adventures. You can park here in front of the marina along Paso Grill Way. This is a life jacket by Senku you can get for your dog. I like them because they are durable and has a nice strap on top to grab your dog. I'll put a link in the description below. Kevin and Bella here visiting all the way from St. Pete and on the tour with me was Tim and Angeli. I'm riding with Captain Scott. 
What we do with our speedboat tours, we do about a 13 mile route. We're gonna go inside either Boca Ciega Bay or downtown St. Pete. Sometimes we go out in the Gulf of Mexico. We get you a good view of the Sunshine Skyway Bridge. About 80% of the time we're doing full speed, which is gonna be about 28 to 30 miles an hour. But when we do slow down, I come over the radio, I give you some information, some history about the area. It's a beautiful area. You're gonna see dolphin, you're gonna see birds. Uh, sometimes manatee, but uh, you're here for the fun. And then we also have pontoon boats that you can rent, and then we also have a charter boat where I can take you out. We can do island hopping, drop you off on an island, get you to walk around a little bit, do whatever you guys want to do. And they are pet friendly. It's really a great way to enjoy the nature because you sit so low to the water. It is $130 for a single passenger or $160 for a double passenger boat. So uh, I'm here for you, I'm Captain Scott. I'm gonna make sure you guys have a good time. All right, now back that way. Now back this way. Oh, like a glove. And right next to Endless Summer Water Sports is the Wharf Restaurant, so you can enjoy a waterfront seafood meal before or after your speedboat adventure. All right, let's go back to the middle of St. Pete Beach and show you the resorts and more water fun. We begin our resort tour at the Postcard Inn. Of the seven resorts we'll show, this will probably be the cheapest. It is pet friendly for dogs up to 30 pounds for a $50 per day fee. They often have a book two nights and get the third night free and discounts for Florida and Georgia residents. There's a rustic beach bar decorated with old license plates and a sand volleyball court. This does tend to get a little lively at night. Next to the Postcard Inn is one of Florida's highest ranked beach bars, Jimmy B's, part of the Beachcomber Resort. This features a massive wooden deck with an open air stage that has live music daily, as well as a late night indoor stage. The bar also serves locally grown produce and fresh seafood. Between Jimmy B's and the Rumfish Resort is Coconut Charlie's, part of the Hilton Garden Inn. Here you can enjoy killer tacos, crispy and thin pizza, boozy slushies, beach bites, and live music on a very plush beach deck. And three hammocks on the beach. And next to the Hilton Garden Inn, where we stayed at, is the Rumfish Beach Resort, which is a Tradewinds property. By the way, I use this collapsible beach wagon by SXTT. Holds 350 pounds, which covers most of my equipment and my dog. And it has big wheels, so good for the beach. I put a link below. I found this Rumfish Beach Resort just by Googling and seeing it had some of the cheapest rates for St. Pete Beach. Ended up finding it for about 140 a night. But when you add in taxes and fees, which are significant in St. Pete Beach, came to about 220 a night. But even so, it was worth it. Keep in mind there is a $62 a night resort fee added on to the rates you see online. Which I never like how resorts do that to you. But the amenities here are pretty good. I ended up with about the perfect room for me. It was room 3839. It faced the golf, although in the tower that sits back from the beach. So view partially blocked by the beachside tower. But it's all the way on the end so you get a little bit of a view. That's Coconut Charlie's over there that we just showed. But this was good because it was close to the parking lot. And this room, right next to the stairway, made it super convenient to go out to the car or out to the beach without having to wait for the elevator. And the fitness center is also on the third floor close to the room, so just perfect. And it's very pet friendly with a dog walking zone in the North Terrace Courtyard. The other amenities here are great. A nice beach bar with very comfortable lounge seating. String lights overhead at night. Enjoying a real tasty burger with sweet potato fries. They even had a little fire for making s'mores, giving you marshmallows, graham cracker, and a Hershey bar. Just a nice place to relax after a long day of filming. One, two, three. There is also a zip line here. Remember Rowan that I met at the coffee shop? Are you ready? You just let go! Well, just happened to run into him again, so we zip lined together. Rowan, a super smart kid. <laughs> as well as the amenities on this property, you can use the amenities at the Tradewinds Island Grand Resort, a quarter of a mile down the beach, which has a little waterway with pedal boats, shuffleboard and pickleball courts, five pools, a mini golf, and this three-story water slide. Welcome to Saint 
also these Cabana Beach Loungers. For an extra $40 charge, there's a seasonal floating water park. And maybe best of all, there's a Duncan across the street from the Rumfish Beach Resort. Yep, yeah, same thing beach style, all right? What happens on the beach stays on the beach, you guessed it. And next to the trade winds, the Serata Beach Resort, where the city commissioners have approved an expansion that will add a 10-story JW Marriott with a fourth floor rooftop restaurant and bar, also an eight-story Hampton Inn, as well as revamping the main building of the Serata. Part of the plan will restore the dunes behind the resort, but the best part is it includes construction of a public boardwalk that will run along the beach, something I have felt St. Pete Beach has needed. At the Serata is Rum Runners, a popular bar and grill with a large outdoor covered area for dining. There's games, live music, a bonfire, lots of Adirondack chairs around the beach, and comfortable lounging. I'm having a buffalo chicken wrap. On the beach at the Serata is Suncoast Water Sports. They have a three hour day and sunset cruise to Sand Dollar Island that is $65 for adults, $50 for children under 21. You get complimentary beer, wine, and soft drinks. There's also an hour long Wave Runner tour for $199. I'm going to do the parasailing. They will pick you up at either the Serata, Postcard Inn, or Dolphin Beach Resort. A smaller boat takes you out to the parasail boat, so you get a couple of boat rides. It is $99 per flyer, or $50 for a spectator, if you want to go out for the boat ride and not fly. They only take six people per boat, which is a good thing, because that means there's three flights, two people per flight, so you get longer flight time, about 10 to 12 minutes. The minimum weight of two flyers has to be at least 200 pounds and no more than 500 pounds. You soar up to 300 feet in the air. Look at the view from up here. It's the time of your life. You can see all the way down from Clearwater all the way down into Sarasota. Well, Sarasota might be a stretch, but you can definitely see past the grill. On our way down. 30 seconds until touchdown. We are on final approach. Landing your nail down the mark. Clear to land, runway 27 right. Pulling the drag shoot. Main gear touchdown, nose gear touchdown. Gonna have to teach Bailey how to parasail. If anyone knows where I can get a hold of any parasailing straps for dogs, let me know in the comments below. Now it's time to hop in the banana boat. Ahoy! This is one of the most fun things to do, and it's only $33 for a 15 minute ride. You do bounce around quite a bit, so if you have back issues, you may want to skip. Batten down the hatch! <laughs> Blow me down! You can determine how fast or slow you want to go by giving a thumbs up or thumbs down. On this day, the waves were really kicking up a little more than it typically does in the Gulf. Abandon ship to eat the fish. There's a rescue helicopter. <laughs> These wild teenagers were singling faster and faster until I just had enough and had to kick them off the boat so that I could enjoy it all to myself. Now this is the way to ride a banana boat. Next to the Serata is the Bellwether Beach Resort, formerly the Grand Plaza. This has just been recently remodeled into a more modern chic resort. Probably provides the best view of St. Pete Beach. At the very top is the Spinner's Revolving Restaurant, where you don't have to worry about having an ocean view because the restaurant makes a full 360 degree rotation in an hour. Thereby, over the course of a dinner, you'll see all four directions. 
Just below Spinners is the Outdoor Level 11 Rooftop Bar and Lounge. While you need reservations for Spinners, you don't for Level 11, as it is a counter-served eatery. On the ground level is Bongo's Beachside Bistro, serving eclectic fare, creative cocktails, and nightly live shows. No reservations needed here either. Ran into subscribers Matt and Becky from Northern California. You know, I'm from San Jose. Okay. So what do you think of Florida? Oh, we're moving here. Oh, you're moving here? We're building a house an hour north of you. Yeah, good choice because California isn't what it used to be. No, it's you're not. absolutely right. Four tenths of a mile south of the Bellwether is the Dolphin Beach Resort, probably with slightly cheaper rates than the other resorts mentioned in this video. It sits across from a shopping center with a Papa John's Pizza and Chick-fil-A, as well as the Dolphin Landing sailboat cruises we mentioned earlier. Also here is the largest public beach parking of St. Pete Beach, with restrooms, or if you are not staying at a nearby condo or resort. Also for public transportation, the Sunrunner has a stop here as well as the trade winds, and it will take you to downtown St. Pete for $2.25 a ride. And there's also freebie with door-to-door -door transportation, anywhere from Paso Grove Beach all the way up to the Blind Pass Bridge. Rides can be requested by phone or through the app or by flagging down a freebie. Also in this area, I wanted to mention the pet-friendly Plaza Beach Hotel that one of our subscribers had recommended. And another half mile down Gulf Boulevard is Hotel Zamora, a luxury resort with a Castillo restaurant a rooftop lounge and pool that gives you 360 degree views, both indoor and outdoor seating. And another half mile further south is the iconic Don Cesar Resort, also referred to as the Pink Palace. It was probably when the Don Cesar was built in 1928 that really ignited St. Pete Beach being known as a great getaway, as it became a golf playground for the rich and certainly contributed to Paso Grill's growth as it is close to that beach. There's piano entertainment in the evenings, and also the Row Bar on the north side of the property, a nice upscale beachside outdoor eatery. So sometimes you just gotta get out, break free from the daily routine to meet new people, to reignite that sense of discovery, like a puppy. To leave your worries behind. While there's many great getaways you can do that in, it doesn't have to be here. But certainly, St. Pete Beach is an ideal place to just let go. As we close out this video, I wanted to let you know, we'll be doing a Florida Dreams version of these two St. Pete videos. That is, a super long version where we show more of the footage of what we film without any narration, but more of the sounds from the video. That will come sometime after the downtown St. Petersburg video. So, what do you think of St. Pete Beach? Where did you stay? What did you do? Share it with our travel community in the comments below to help others planning a St. Pete Beach getaway. If traveling with a dog, I'd recommend these Kurgle dog backpacks. Helps to keep your dog from excessive walking and allows you to bring your dog to places without any issues. We are Tampa Aerial Media. We film travel promos across the USA. If you would like to purchase any of our footage or hire us to film your region, city, or resort, contact us at info at tampaaerialmedia.com. Well, next, we show you the rest of St. Petersburg, downtown, Gulfport, Fort DeSoto, and the Skyway Bridge. So don't let the negative news and the political fighting weigh you down. Get out and just let go. From Florida's Gulf Coast, I wish blessings to you wherever you may be.